Coming up next, everything you need to know about electric vehicle chargers and probably a few things you don't. But hey, that's what chapters are for. This is EV Basics, where we aim to educate and entertain. And I'll tell you, you won't find better edutainment for the price. Just six easy payments of $39.99 plus a small minimal processing fee. That gets you complete access to the entire EV Basics LaserDisc set, plus an autographed copy of my latest novella. Craig, these are all available on YouTube. Anyone can watch them. What? The videos are free? N nobody told me that. And stop hawking your book. How are the kickbacks supposed to work then? All right, EV charging. There are several ways you can juice up your electric vehicle. In this video, we'll cover the three main charging types, plus a bonus technology that's an up and coming game changer. We'll also detail all the connectors you may encounter, but let's start with a breakdown of charging speeds. Level 1 charging is the simplest, though by far the slowest. This uses 120 volt alternating current electricity, or AC for short. Basically, this is what flows from the standard outlets in your home or garage. Yep, one of those. Many EVs come with a level 1 charger as standard equipment, so you can plug in and juice up just about anywhere, like mooching power from a friend or family member when you go for a visit. Sidebar, we may call this a charger, but technically it's an EVSE, which stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment. And I think this particular unit was built by Stellantis or something, I'm not sure. Not to get tangled in the weeds, but the real charger is part of your EV's electrical system. This equipment simply supplies the power safely. So know that when we talk about chargers, we're actually speaking of EVSEs. Sidebar ended. Ideally, however, you'll never level one charge your EV because it's so slow. Depending on the vehicle, you'll get three, maybe five miles of range per hour, which in the grand scheme of things is horrible, though it is still better than walking. I view level one charging as an option of last resort, one best left for emergency situations, and about the only case where frequent level one charging makes any sense is with plug-in hybrids. Their batteries are much smaller than the ones in all electric vehicles, so they do charge up a lot faster. In comparison, level two charging is a much better option. It's what you'll probably do every day, either at home or a public location. Level 2 chargers also operate on AC power, but at 240 volts, so they're way more potent. Going level 2 gets you around 30 miles of range per hour with a lot of EVs available today, though this can vary drastically depending on the vehicle itself and how many amps the power circuit feeding the charger provides. Level 2 charging is perfect for everyday use. You get home from work or running errands. You plug in and your EV will be fully juiced by the next morning or much sooner than that if you didn't run the battery way down. Best of all, Level 2 charging does this without stressing the battery, which can be an issue with DC fast charging. More on that in a bit. Now, there can be a downside to Level 2 charging at home, and it's potentially a big one. Cost. You may have to pay for the charger itself, they are usually not cheap. And then, unless you're super handy, you often have to shell out more money for an electrician to install the charger because a new 240 volt circuit may have to be run from your power panel to the place where you want to charge your EV. So be aware of potential additional costs, which can add up to thousands of dollars. However, if you're lucky, the electric vehicle you buy may come with an EVSE that has an option to double as a level two charger by swapping out the plug. Just pull that out, got my level two here. It goes right in the end, just like so. And if you are really lucky, your garage already has a NEMA 1450 outlet similar to this one, what you may call a dryer plug. And if you've got both of these, good news, you are in business, no need to spend more money. That being said, keeping a portable charger in your vehicle is never a bad idea, so consider having one for home and one to go. As mentioned, level two charging is ideal for everyday use. Really, it's the best all around option, but if you are on a road trip and need to juice up your EV, don't seek out a level two charger unless it's the one at your hotel or it's your only option. 
Though speedy, it still takes hours and hours to replenish the battery. What you want is a DC fast charger. Sometimes erroneously called level three chargers, these power boxes are built for speed. They're like the cheetahs of the charging world. Depending on the unit, they can push out anywhere from 50 to 350 kilowatts of juice, enough to replenish a depleted battery pack in just minutes. Attached to an appropriate DC fast charger, cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6, for instance, can go from a 10% state of charge to 80% in just 18 minutes. That's barely enough time to use the bathroom and grab a snack. When DC fast charging, it's also very important to know how much power your vehicle can take. If you drive, let's say, a Volkswagen ID4, it tops out at 135 kilowatts. So there's no sense plugging into a 350 kilowatt charger. Now, you absolutely can do this. It won't damage the vehicle at all, but it's not going to charge any faster than the maximum rate. Now, the polite thing to do is hook to a 150 kilowatt charger and save the 350 for drivers that can take advantage of all that power. And we have a full EV Basics video explaining the differences between kilowatts and kilowatt hours, so make sure to check that out when you get a chance. Anyway, the speed of DC fast charging is unmatched, but it does have two significant downsides. One, regular use can degrade your vehicle's battery pack, so be aware of that if you plan on making cross-country drives in your EV every other week. And two, DC fast charging isn't cheap. It may still be a bargain compared to gasoline, but you're practically guaranteed to pay a lot more per kilowatt hour than you will level two charging at home. And this makes sense because it costs big money to install a DC fast charger, tens of thousands of dollars or more. And whoever shelled out the cash for that probably wants to make it back. In short, you're paying a premium for instant gratification. Well, nearly instant gratification. Lastly, there's one more option to talk about, wireless charging. As you might imagine, this EV energizing technology requires no cables or connectors. You just park over top a special plate and the system sends electricity right into your vehicle's battery. It's that simple. Wireless charging technology from Wytricity, the sponsor of this video, makes life with an electric vehicle even easier. But beyond the convenience of not having to plug in, their system also supports vehicle-to-grid and bi-directional charging, so your EV can feed electricity directly into your home's wiring system if there's a blackout, or even the broader power grid during times of high demand. Of course, this is something certain hardwired EV chargers can do, but only if they're plugged in. Should you forget to click the connector to your vehicle, you won't get these benefits. Wytricity's wireless charging systems use a technology called magnetic resonance, which makes them just as fast, efficient, and safe as level two charging with a cable. So really, there are no downsides to cutting the cord. For more information about Wytricity or wireless charging technology, follow the link on screen or in the description box down below. Also, if you like what you see here, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the EV Pulse YouTube channel for more videos like this one, plus the latest news from auto shows, high quality vehicle reviews, and so much more. We appreciate you guys so much and thanks again. Moving right along, let's now talk about charging connectors so you know the difference between a CCS plug and CHAdeMO. So in North America, there are four types of electric vehicle plugs in common use. Level one and level two charging have the same five pin connector, the so-called J plug or SAE J1772. DC fast charging uses the combined charging system connector, CCS for short. And this looks like the J plug, but with a couple larger terminals added to the bottom. Almost every type of EV sold in America can accept a J plug and or CCS connector. Both standards are well supported, so you should have zero issues. Next, there's CHAdeMO, which is an odd looking design that was developed in Japan. This DC fast charging connector is used on very few vehicles. In America, the only car I can think of that has a CHAdeMO port is the Nissan Leaf. So unless you own one of these cars or maybe a Nissan dealership, you're probably not going to encounter CHAdeMO very often. In fact, the newer Nissan Aria doesn't even support this dated standard, so feel free to forget about it right now. Remember when I said almost every EV supports a J-plug? Well, of course we can't talk about connectors without mentioning Tesla's proprietary design, which is everywhere because it's what comes on Tesla vehicles. 
Elon Musk's configuration looks kind of like the J-plug, but slightly flattened. Because of its unique shape, the Tesla connector only works with Tesla chargers. Unlike other EVs, the same plug shape is used no matter if you're slow charging or fast charging. Adapters are available that allow the Model S and its kinfolk to charge at EVSEs equipped with either J-plug or CCS. And while adapters like this one allow non-Teslas to recharge at Tesla slow chargers, no such capability exists for fast charging. Elon Musk's proprietary charging port design is one of the reasons you can't juice up other EVs at a Tesla super supercharger, though corporate politics are the biggest hurdle. Someday Elon Musk will open his industry-leading charging network to non-Tesla EVs. Someday. And maybe someday I'll build a spaceship out of trash cans and fly myself to Mars. I might even beat Elon there. But before that, I think I'm gonna fly out of the studio here because we are done. You are now familiar with the different EV charging options out there, when you should use them, and what their disadvantages are. We also covered various charging connectors, so they shouldn't be confusing when you encounter them. I hope you enjoyed this video and, more importantly, learned a few things. For EV Pulse, I am Craig Cole. Thanks again for watching, and please order my book. I said no more. Put that down. No, I want the people to buy my book. Put it, no. I spent days writing this. Oh my God.